Hello. So now I'm going to show you the, the, the second part of the sprint where I'm going to implement the web services. And I'm also going to show you um, the implementation of this new service, which is pretty simple with the um, get execution courses, our course executions. And of course, uh, show you then the test. And I'm going to show you how it is very simple to close an issue by writing something in the commit message. Okay, so let's um, do that. And okay. So starting with the implementation of the get uh, course execution service is uh, very simple because um, we already have defined this course DTO. Okay, that has all the information that uh, that you need. Okay, and what we're going to do is we go to the courses repository, invoke a find all, which is uh, predefined when you. Uh, use a J JPA, so it's one of the methods that basically uh, returns all the instances that exist in the database, so all the course executions. You convert into into a stream, and then you generate, okay, uh, the course details for each one of the elements that is in the database, and then you're going to sort them, and I'm going to sort them using two comparisons. So I'm going to sort it first by the course DTO, get name, and then by the academic term. I'm already thinking about how it's going to be presented, so uh, this is the one I, I want to have it. And then I convert it to a list, and then I have a list of course DTOs, and I just return this list. Okay, so very simple. And then to implement the web services, what you need to do, you need to create a uh, controller, class so and you define there that you have a controller here okay so you say that is a rest controller by using this annotation you are converting all the information that comes in and out in terms of JSON okay so basically you are converting the DTOs into JSON objects and so all this marshalling and marshalling of data is uh, done by uh, Spring Boot Okay, and then I define the mappings. I have two mappings, a get mapping that given admin courses executions, basically do a, a get, and I just return the list of course details by invoking this service here. Okay, so by invoking the service, you see this return. Look that actually we are not returning these details because actually then the rest controller is going to convert this list into a, a JSON list that is going to be received by the front end. Okay, and very similarly, uh, when you create a course DTO execution, you're going to receive from the front end a request body parameter, so which is the JSON in JSON, and then Spring Boot converts this into a course DTO Java object, so a, a plain Java object, which is a usually called the Pojo, uh, plain old Java object, so with only the getters and setters, and then you invoke the service, okay? And you create the external course here, and basically it returns a course DTO. We'll see that even the exceptions are converted, so if an exception is thrown there, it is converted and is received on the other side, okay? So I can show you this. Good. So that part is okay. So to understand how the exceptions work, we'll see this class here, custom execution handler. Well, this is a generic handler that catches all the exceptions and basically converts the server-side Java exceptions into HTTP exceptions. So in, for instance, the example, is, this is an exception handler for tutor exception. So we want to throw a tutor exception Basically, it, it transforms the re what is going to send to the client is a bad request exception. And additionally, we can just define the DTO that is going to be inside this exception. So we define tutor exceptions DTOs that you define there. And basically, it's the same idea. You just send 
JSON information with the exceptions. And then you see the different type of exceptions we are sending, a bad request, a forbidden, with when, as I show you, when you don't have a, uh, the, the SAS control fail, so you don't have the, the privileges to, to, to invoke the operation, and an OK in this case, and an internal server exception. OK? So, so you can ignore this case because it's not. OK, good. What else do we have in this um, controller is the, this pre-authorize. So in this pre-authorize, what I'm saying is that only users that have the admin role can invoke this operation. OK? Um, of course, you can have more precise and more uh, domain-specific access control in the case that you need to say that only the teacher of a course can do something or it, it, even a, a student of a course can uh, answer the quizzes, but uh, it's not that the case, so we can, uh, uh, it's enough to have this uh, generic role-based um, access control. So, the next thing I want to show you is the implementation of this uh, get um, course executions. Uh, yes, I've shown that already to you, and I'm going to show you the, the test. So I want, I want to test this, and the test is pretty simple. It's like, um, like you have here, okay? So you just create uh, two course executions, then I invoke the course execution, and I, <coughs> I invoke the get course executions, and I just uh, check the results. I know the order because I'm ordering them, so I know that uh, which comes first, so it's easy to, to, to test the, if that uh, the return value, it's, it's okay. And I think that is interesting, I, I presented is that if, if you enable Maven inside IntelliJ, you have this, and you, you can say if you're executing in which context. So in this case, in which profile. So I'm, I can execute this test running the test profile. So using the, the test profile. Okay. So it's going to use the, the test profile and the test passes. Good. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how can we commit this? So uh, the the current situation in, in in the project is something like this. Okay, so I have already finished these tasks, and I need to finish the task associated with the um, with the test. Okay, so I finish what create a new course execution web service list. Course executions implement a service and list course executions define the web service. And I still need to commit the list course executions test service. What I'm going to show you to finish, look, the number of this issue is 90. So what I'm going to show you is how do I, when I commit, how do I close automatically this uh, issue. So the test is still running, okay, with the test pass. So I go there, I do a git status. We'll see that the Groovy class uh, where the test is implemented, it's here. So I do a git commit minus s minus am. Okay, this is a short way to do it. I'm just adding these and then committing it. So minus a. And so what I'm going to do is uh, test get uh, course executions. And then I say that it closes the 90 issue. Good. There it is. And now when I do a push, git push, Okay, it, it it will close automatically the on the other side. Good. Okay, that's that's all. Thank you.